Hey, it's Vaughn here at your jazzdrumschool.com YouTube channel. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So this is Quiet Drumming Setup 2.0. Now, if you haven't already checked out my other video about a quiet drumming setup that's fun to play, uh, go check it out. It's up here, there's a link here, and also down below in the description. And what I did at that time, a couple years ago, was I put together the video so that I could show everybody what I'm practicing on in the apartment that I was living in at the time. And it worked really, really well. Uh, it was really great at controlling the sound, but I still had great feel and I could really practice effectively for my gigs. But recently, my good friend Steve Ulyssini at uh, Evans Diodario dropped some new DB1 drum heads in my lap and said, give them a shot. See what you think of them. And I haven't put them on my drums yet. I don't have any idea what they sound like. I haven't heard any, I've watched any videos on YouTube with other people playing them. I have no expectations actually about them. Just wanted to try them out and I thought I'd do a little A, B for it. You can hear me play uh, with my regular calf tones, Evans calf tone heads, and then I'm gonna put the other ones on, put the DB ones on, and we'll see how they sound. All right, so here we go, got them all set up. Uh, and what I did also is I added in the DB1 cymbals. Uh, these are also, Steve kind of threw these in and said, check everything out and check it out together. And I haven't really played on it, just kind of got them tuned up. So let's hear how they sound. Well, they're definitely cutting the volume out. And one of the things that's uh, surprising for me uh, is the tone I'm getting out of these tom-toms. I mean, this is really amazing, actually. Such nice tone, really fun to play. And uh, the action is, it's pretty accurate. It doesn't feel like it's overly bouncy. It's a little bouncier than a normal drum head, but it's not too bad. Listen to that tone. Wow. And basically what I've done is I've left all the resonant heads on all of my drums and I just put these on the batter side. So the snare drum also is really, um, it's, it's a cool concept. And uh, you know, it doesn't sound like a real snare drum, but I think, you know, this is a really a happy medium. This is something that can be very useful for a lot of drummers. And something I would consider uh, practicing on as well. So, uh, really a cool concept to put the snares 
on the other side of the batter side head. That's pretty cool. Now you can add the snares into it, your regular snares, and you get a little, and that's kind of cool, but there's still a little bit of that kind of delay between the time you hit the top head and the, the, the snares uh, rattling on the bottom. So I don't like that sound so much. And when you go to hit your toms, the sympathetic vibration causes your snares to do that kind of weird stuff. So maybe not something I would use. I'd probably just turn the snares off and use without. Uh, now you can tune it up to varying degrees. I kind of experimented with tuning it up. If you tune it down a little more, it's a little sloppier sounding. If you tune it up, it's a tighter sound. All right, so a couple more things I want to mention about the snare head. You can get pretty nice cross sticks, not too bad. And you can also get nice uh, rim shots. And that's really a nice plus. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're playing mesh heads, you don't get a really nice sound. One drawback about this head is that you can't turn off the snares, right? So you can't just play your it as a like a, as a tom tom because the snares are always on. They're attached to the, the drum head. But for the most part, when we're practicing, we're really working on playing with the snares anyway. So I think it's a great head for that. This is the bass drum head of the DB1 bass drum head. Uh, and it's interesting, it's got some hard foam here on the back and it's got a, a plastic dot kind of on the, on the front. Uh, and I, I guess the idea is that by putting something, connecting something to the mesh head, it's gonna give it some tone. So the bass drum head I was showing you before is for a 20 inch kick. And I don't have a 20 inch kick in my studio. Instead, what I have is a 16 inch on my, uh, Pearl Midtown kit here. And it's got kind of the same design though. It's got that hard foam there. It's got a dot here uh, on the front. So anyway, I'm gonna give this a shot on my kick drum. The other thing I have is for my toms, I have a 10 inch, same design, you see that? Put that up there. And I have a 13 inch for my 13 inch tom over here. So I'm gonna put those on there. Now the most intriguing one for me is the snare drum head. Because if you go and you check out my video from before, I was pretty adamant about the mesh heads not working well for playing snare drum because there was a kind of a slap back that came from the snare when you played it, uh, when you played a mesh head on the top. And what Evans has done to kind of rectify this problem or to kind of fix this problem is they've created a completely different design. And I'm pretty intrigued by it and I'm excited to see how it sounds. But basically what they've done is instead of just a regular mesh head, they put some plastic on the back and they've slotted it so that they've got these kind of like snares basically across the top or the, across the bottom of the head. And what this does is like kind of instead of moving, instead of playing the snares on the bottom of the head, on the bottom of the snare drum, you're actually playing them on the top head. So it's moved the snares up, which I think in principle should give it a lot more sensitivity and a lot more response. And here's a close up of it. You can see kind of, it's really quite interesting, a really interesting design. All right, so regarding the bass drum head, now again, I'm using a tom head instead of a dedicated bass drum head, but I think it sounds pretty good. And again, I've left the, the resonant head on the front. Uh, and what, it, what I recommend you do is tune it up a little bit higher than maybe you normally would so that you can get some tone out of it so you can actually hear your kick drum. Uh, if we can't hear the drums, we have a tendency to kind of overplay. So, you know, try to tune it up a little bit and you get a little more tone that way and you can hear it and it's a little easier to practice. Uh, so, but I mean, excellent. I mean, you know, you get to use your drums and, and practice and you get a pretty good sound. You get that kind of that, that slappy sound out of the bass drum if you like funk and hip hop and stuff, uh, and even, even with jazz. I mean, you wanna hear some kind of uh, definition when you're playing the bass drum, and uh, this really does the trick.
But I love the color. I love that everything is black. It's really kind of a relaxing feeling uh, playing the cymbals and the drums. But these cymbals are really incredible. These are something else, man. The tone out of this is unreal. I mean, these are incredible. These sound so good. And the hi-hats sound really good too. And one of the cool things about this is that in this pack of cymbals, you also get three. So I'm not even, I don't even have all the cymbals set up. You get another cymbal, you get three cymbals. It's, a, it's a, just a scream and deal. So, uh, you know, again, I'm not endorsing uh, anybody. Nobody's paying me to do this. I'm doing this because I want to share with you and for you to have gear and stuff that inspires you to play great on the drums. But check these out. Now, a couple of other things about the cymbals. They really sound beautiful. They sound incredible for practice cymbals. And if you play them different places, they have slightly different nuance depending on where you're playing it, just like a regular cymbal. The thing that's really incredible about these is the bell. Such a nice, defined sound, but, you know, really, kind of blends in with the whole symbol too. It's just a, a great combination. Now regarding the hi-hats, they sound really good too. Nice tight sound. And what they've done here also is they have one that they've made slightly heavier and the, the dot pattern is different. If you can see that, it's a little hard to see, but the dot pattern is a little bit different in the bottom head than in a bottom symbol than in the top symbol. So they've really made this truly a bottom symbol for your hi-hat. And this one is a top symbol for your hi-hat. So really cleverly done, I have to say. And it really makes a difference when we're going to play our symbols. And let's check out the bell over here too. Got a nice bell in your hi-hat also. Now for me, being a jazz drummer, uh, this is the litmus test. Can you use brushes? I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Let's see what happens. It works, it has a really nice sound when it swishes, but because of the little holes in there, your bristles get caught on it. But it has a really nice sound for the brushes, a really nice swish sound. Now, let's try a different set of brushes. All right, so now I've got my Promark Nylon Brush 5B light brushes, and I would really never play these on a gig uh, unless I wanted a special effect out of my playing, like maybe playing some pop music or something like that. But I thought, hmm, let's try these with a practice kit. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. So, the wire brushes don't work, but these brushes work great. Holy moly. Again, I haven't played any of this stuff. I'm doing it with you right now. Hmm. 
Now this little dot up here kind of gets in the way of playing brushes, but I mean, you know, not too bad. There you go. Wow, pretty good. So there's your solution for brushes. Uh, so I guess if I have to say all in all, I'd say it's pretty good. And uh, if I had to live in an apartment again where I couldn't have a studio, where I couldn't just play my drums, uh, this is what I would get. This is exactly the setup I would get. It's like no fuss, no bother, uh, everything is in one. And I believe uh, you can also online, you can get everything together, get the symbols and, and the, the heads together. So I'll put links, uh, you know, I'll put links uh, up here and also down below in the description. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, be sure you like the video if you like it. That helps it get around YouTube a lot easier. And drop a comment. Let me know if you've used DB1 drum heads or DB1 symbols. I'd love to know how they worked out for you. All right. Keep swinging, my friend.